I've made a prediction twice now that our culture is on a path towards accepting and normalizing paedophilia. The first time was in the Stay Free series and then the second time was in the War and Truth series. My reasoning for saying it in Stay Free was basically that we are watching the moral breakdown of our society today. The West has rejected God, rejected Christianity, rejected the moral underpinnings of our civilization that's guided us for 2,000 years and therefore we're starting to see our civilization fall apart. One of the key signs that a civilization is indeed unraveling, and we see this time and time again from history, is that it starts to accept and promote sexual confusion. The most famous example from history is, of course, the Roman Empire. Historians have agreed for centuries that when the Romans started normalizing sexual confusion, it was an outward sign of inner moral decay that signaled that their civilization did not have long to go. That, I believe, is what we're witnessing in the West today. Shit, do you guys even hear yourselves, man? Because, you know, this this is... A, you, thank God for Jack Dorsey, and I hope he holds the line, man, because he actually said, in his own words, they have not broken our policies. But the problem with everybody else is it's become a feeling thing, right? Like, so now it's about my feelings. I don't know, how does it feel? And, my, and like, I ask, I'll ask this. Who's policing this, dude? Do you know what I mean? And we already know who's policing it. The professors, the uh, liberal leftists that work at Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. I know somebody that works at Facebook is a Trump supporter, and they're terrified to even speak to people that they work with because they're scared they're going to get attacked. So if, if you're telling Mark Zuckerberg, who went before Congress and actually said not under oath, that he wants to follow the EU model, and that should raise awareness to anybody, that should raise suspicion to anyone, that should actually make you feel afraid. Uh, because here's the thing, it, it, and again, I revert back to the whole Joker and Green Goblin thing, because it, that is, at the, bottom, at the bottom line, that's the truth. So what if somebody said it? You know what I mean? Like, so what? But now we're at a point where basically they're going to use this as the stepping stone and the catalyst. And people like myself have already been removed twice from Facebook. I've already had to tone down my message and how I deliver it. So I I'm kind of stuck in the same paradigm where, like, dude, the day that I saw InfoWars go down, the day that I woke up and I read the headlines, I was like, holy shit, I'm next. I, I was just waiting for it. Like, here it comes. And then people like Mark Dice, people like uh, Paul Joseph Watson, people like, you know, like, and where does it stop? And like I said, one of the things that I think of is is the fact that they could easily just purge pages and say that they did it because they've been inactive since 2016, whether it's true or not. But what I also find funny, though, and, I, and I've said this before, if Alex Jones is so dangerous, then what are the people on social media using their platform to normalize pedophilia that actually affects children? I mean, we live in a society where it is perfectly OK for, for people to indoctrinate kids and at three, four years old, try to have them figure out their sexuality, which is psychological damaging. You know, psychologically is damaging. So, I mean, I, what is what is next for you guys, man? Like, I know you, you, you guys uh, I talked to. I agree with you. I mean, this is just, this is, there are people out there, again, like you touched on before, that are not informed, and they are the, um, they are, how can I say this? They, they're uninformed, but yet they are very easily manipulated to where if they hear something, uh, they will go with that narrative, and they will, you know, fully get behind something that, even though they don't have any understanding of it whatsoever, they will just take it because the populace in their mind, the populace, everybody's saying that's the way to go. So they are a born follower, and they will go along with whatever that narrative is. And this goes right back to MK Ultras and undermine control, all these things. I mean, it goes right back to that CIA playbook of, you know, how they can manipulate the human mind. And, and so it's sad, it's unfortunate, and this is why I urge people, and for all of you listening out there today, don't take my word for anything that I've said here. I urge you to research it for yourself. Always pray first. Ask God for the truth. Ask God to lead you in the direction of truth. And then see it for yourself. And be prepared to have your eyes wide open. <laughs> I didn't get into YouTube. I didn't get into talking to you guys. Trying to shine a light with you guys. Trying to be a man of Jesus Christ. Spreading the word of the Lord, letting you guys know about daily prayer and the power of prayer. Even if you don't believe there's a man in the clouds, concentrated thought and positive energy is so powerful. And good versus evil is the basis of life. What I got into making YouTube videos for is spreading the truth, letting people know what's going on in the world and letting them know the power of the Lord. 
you know, this whole battle that we're going through between good and evil. And this is my own perspective through Jesus Christ and Christianity. You know, I know there's some atheists that watch me as well, but they understand that there's a battle going on between light and darkness. I got into this to tell people the truth, to tell people my own perspective, my own opinions. I've recently been under some vicious character attacks. It just seems uncharacteristic of the truther community that I grew fond of. These people, you know, I watch frequently and used to tune into all the time. The, the energy has gotten very vicious. It's gotten very negative. And it's just interesting that so many people are focused on me out of all people because I'm not the enemy, right? I'm not the target. We're talking about the global conspiracy. We're talking about the new world order, the global banking system, how society has this hidden mechanism that's really making everyone go like a Duracell battery, right? But I come out with some opinions that differ from others. I try to let you guys know that QAnon isn't real. Uh, the QAnon is leading us down the wrong path and really having a malicious nature to it. You look at the latest posts, it's mostly cheerleading and just posting videos of Reagan, almost like a fan fiction. And this is my own two cents. I'm telling you guys what I believe. QAnon is not legitimate. We need to focus on the real truth. And guess what? I get the whole truth or community giving me flack, right? Giving me flack just for trying to tell you guys the facts that this isn't real. Obviously, I've lost thousands of subscribers, thousands of Twitter people. And, I mean, the comments I'm reading are just off the wall. It's just absolutely absurd. I've never read so many unwarranted uh, claims with no evidence. You know, these character attacks being incredibly vicious. And I don't know whether this is just the nature of the Internet or what it is within people that wants to make them attack me like I'm some sort of sandbag. And I've seen it with other people as well, you know. Everyone's throwing Alex Jones under the bus. Everyone's throwing Corsi, David Seaman, anyone that actually has their own opinions. Everyone is completely trashing them. And I think it's so wrong. I really think it is wrong considering the fact we're all playing here on the same team. We just have different perspectives. And I don't think this animus that's been going on is a coincidence. <laughs> no coincidences. But these are just some thoughts I've been having. It's not the same community from the beginning uh, that was very welcoming, very open-armed and loving. I'm starting to see the ugly underbelly of this community, which is really a lot of hate, right? If you read the comments, these, these, you know, I'm a person. I'm just a person trying to tell you guys the facts. And like I said, I didn't get into this to lie to you guys. So another one of those videos uh, that YouTubers make all the time because this is our job, this is our livelihood. We are very concerned about this website. I'm very concerned about this website, not only as a creator, but as someone who uses it every single day and watches a wide variety of different people. I, I watch progressive people and conservative people and people down the middle and people who push the fringes of the envelope for their comedic style and things along that lines. I watch a lot of edgy stuff here on YouTube and I certainly don't want that stuff to go away. But at the same time, I don't want YouTube to go away either because YouTube is uh, pretty much, we're trapped here as creators using this service. The problem with being stuck here is that I love freedom of expression and freedom of speech and I love pushing the envelope a little bit from time to time with my Francis sketches and the videos and, and the swearing. And if you follow me on Twitch or Twitter, you know I push the envelope there too. I love being able to express myself and I believe that you have the right to express yourself even if what you have to say is unpopular. Now I do think the line is drawn somewhere at harmful speech, especially intentionally harmful speech. You can't shout fire in a crowded theater for example. But right up to that line, I think you should be able to say or do whatever you want to, no matter how unpopular it happens to be. And for whatever good reason you have to do it, if you have a good reason, I think you should be able to do it. Obviously, YouTube no longer feels that way and that's kind of a problem. Now YouTube is actually really good at getting rid of harmful speech and I mean like straight up hate speech and evil stuff and stuff like doxing another YouTuber or putting out personal information out there or even with the Logan Paul situation they took a while to respond uh, but but they did eventually respond and I'm glad that they did uh, but that was one of those interesting areas where what YouTube considers to be harmful uh, is kind of a gray area and that's what I want to talk about today and that's the biggest issue I think YouTube faces right now is trying to differentiate between harmful and unpopular speech um, unpopular just being stuff like religion or politics or things along that lines that they don't want advertisers dealing on 
and treating it differently than the way an actual attack video or showing corpses or things along that lines. YouTube has two methodologies to do that. The first is the horrible AI bot that they've written and tried to train over the last year. It continues to do a terrible job because it thinks video gameplay, uh, you know, with zombies' heads getting blown off, that is harmful speech sometimes, at least, at the very least, unpopular enough to not be advertised on. Uh, they can continue to try to train that bot, and hopefully they'll get it right, but I don't know that they will. They can also bring in people, and it looks like Google has announced that they're going to help YouTube by hiring 10,000 people to start vetting content here on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, the data led back to a lot of very, very far-left Democrats that were behind it. Um, that actually can be found a couple different places, through zero hours early stuff on it, that uh, when I was doing um, my live streams, the, lo the long ones on this, there was some stuff put out by Zero Hour, and there was a. I'll find out who else, because there's a couple channels where you know it was just put out, and that was all they did on it. And uh, they have you know the data trail tracing Bitcoin addresses back and showing. But then again, you know, I try not to even hold that into a big regard in my mind because so many people switched sides. You know, that whole walk away movement. It was actually going on for a while before it got trending, just like everything does most of the time if it's a natural trend. So. I don't know. Let's let him go, though. You know, on, on the keyboard, that kind of thing. But she was definitely, she and her people were actually the ones behind this, and that's definitely the way it's looking now. So they knew they couldn't stop the MAGA movement. It's too big. They couldn't, they couldn't stop the Trump train, so to speak. Uh, the election showed them that, number one, even though they were lying about it and say they had the popular vote and all this when they were trying to rig the election. They, they really know that they weren't kidding themselves, even though they were lying to the American people about all that to cause dissension and conflict. But they realized that they needed to go after it at another angle. And so what they did was is they force fed you what you wanted to hear. That's so true. So true, man. A lot of people are calling the mainstream media attacks. My thing is, if, if they're saying true things, I don't get how it's so quickly labeled an attack. Um, they are doing that. Think about it. Like, it's not even Q. There's this huge movement. I don't know if you've noticed it, but there are people that took the ideology of it and left it behind, but still pushed the ideology. And they call it research. They call it political... Um, you know, political commentary or research, but there are people trying to still say, like, look, these concepts that Q pushed out are actually real, and this is how I'll show you. But, but they don't, you don't ever know. After a few months of them not saying that letter of the alphabet, you start to forget that that's where that this all came from, and that's a real thing. It is. Let me shrink this down, make it a lot easier to see. There we go. That way you can get his, the name. And of they it force in there. fed you so much. That it, it, what it basically did is it put you to sleep. It choked you. It asphyxiated you. It made you trust the plan. And I don't care who you do it with, but but we just need to come clean because now we know that there. As you're aware, I'm sure that you're looking at the technical information that has been found by the Anons uh, and by some other people, which I'm going to mention here in a minute. It's all exposed now, Paul. All of it. And we don't need to run around. I'm not saying that you had any evil intent. Um, you, it probably wasn't it. You probably really did just want to, to help people to see things. But, Paul, they weren't necessary. They weren't necessary. Why is it that Roy is always the guy who, who stands up and says what needs to be said? While everybody else is worried about all this other stuff, I'm guilty of it, too. Roy's the guy who just says what needs to be said. I had a private conversation with someone about this. It's like, no, I said it on my Twitter live feed yesterday. It's like, Paul, bro, I know that you probably are maybe embarrassed or there's something there, but, you know, getting it off your chest would make him feel so much better. The evidence is overwhelming. It's almost like the hand was literally photographed in the cookie jar.